technology has the potential to unite us here in Durham, the Triangle area, and globally. Technology is a catalyst for cultural change and positively impacting our communities. So here's the question. How can you leverage technology to enhance our culture and unite us? Do you know that nine out of 10 of us in the US, including here in Durham, have access to the internet? In addition, eight out of 10 roughly own smartphones. Now think about where we were 15 years ago as it relates to these technologies. And then you begin to see how these technologies have changed our culture and united us. So I want to spend some time with you talking about some emerging technologies that can enhance our culture, particularly blockchain technology. Now, blockchain technology has the potential to increase efficiencies, solve problems in many fields of endeavor, and also change whole industries all the while enhancing our culture and uniting us. So when I mention blockchain technology as part of this talk, I want to focus on the actual technology. There is a difference between blockchain technology and cryptocurrency, for example. Blockchain technology can exist without cryptocurrency, but cryptocurrency cannot exist without blockchain technology. So the blockchain is the foundation. So what is blockchain technology? Well, I'm going to describe it uh, in three different ways. Number one, blockchain technology enables one to store data in a distributed ledger that can be accessed by anyone in the world who has the permission to access the data. Now, once the data is actually placed in the blockchain, it is immutable. That is, it cannot be changed without the knowledge of those who have access to it. And this can minimize or eliminate fraud and other dubious behaviors. So one step about one description of blockchain is that it stores data in a distributed ledger that is immutable. Number two, blockchain technology can eliminate or minimize the middleman or an intermediary. Consider, for example, uh, Ted wants to buy something from Mary's store. So there is a transaction that's going to be involved. Now, Ted and Mary do not know each other, so there's no trust between them. However, they both trust a credit card. So the credit card is the middleman, it's the intermediary. And so they conduct a transaction using this credit card. But the issue here is that this credit card, as part of the processing of the transaction, charges fees. Both John and Mary pays fees as a result of this process. With blockchain technology, the technology itself is the intermediary. So this drastically reduces the cost of a transaction. And it does this by leveraging complex cryptographic algorithms that may require a large amount of computational capacity. Now, this is what really excites me because uh, at my core, I am a supercomputer designer. Can't you tell? <laughs> so, so blockchain uh, becomes a disintermediary, reducing the cost of a transaction. And then the final thing I want to describe about blockchain is the fact that it can automatically execute smart contracts. What do I mean by a smart contract? Well, you think about a traditional legal contract when there are terms and conditions that are agreed to by the relevant parties and then signed. Well, a smart contract is a legal contract 
that is encoded in software and then becomes a software program. Now, this smart contract can be stored on the blockchain and automatically executed based upon certain agreed triggers by the relevant parties. So this is blockchain, data stored in the distributed ledger that's immutable, disintermediation, and the automatic execution of smart contracts. So what are some use cases of uh, blockchain technology? Well, I'll describe three in three different industries. First, the housing industry. You know, um, uh, housing vacancies or apartment vacancies have been decreasing since the financial crisis over a decade ago. In addition, the asking rents for these apartments are going up. Uh, and it's also very expensive to move into an apartment. For example, here in Durham, for a nice luxury two-bedroom apartment in downtown Durham, uh, it may be about $2,000 a month on the low side. Uh, but to move in, there's one month's rent, uh, two months deposit, and you may have to pay a registration fee and, of course, the cost to move in. So this can total about $7,000 just to move in. Now, you may have the money to pay the rent every month, but you may not have the $7,000 to move in. Well, there is a blockchain startup company called RentBerry. Rent enables a renter to do crowdsourcing. That is, individuals from anywhere in the world can donate funds to the renter to help them pay for their deposit. Uh, typically, 10% is paid by the renter. So in the example, $700. And then the $6,300 is paid through crowdsourcing. Now, those who contribute from anywhere in the world also get rewarded. So this is a win-win opportunity, and also an opportunity to shift the culture and bring together people from all over the world to help individuals. Now, when you think about renting, the landlord also has to pay expenses, a cost to actually find uh, a tenant. It also costs for, for maintenance and services. And typically, there are middlemen or intermediaries uh, that the landlord solicits for these services. And then, of course, the costs are then passed on to the renter. Well, with RentBerry, they also have a decentralized marketplace that enables landlords and renters to find each other at minimal cost. So here's an example of how blockchain can be used to lower costs, to unite people, and to change our culture. Another example is in the field of medicine. We here in Durham, uh, we can take advantage of a world-renowned re healthcare system, the Duke healthcare system. Uh, and Duke has this really good electronic health record system, or EHR, called MyChart, the Duke MyChart. It's very good. But let me give you an example, uh, my own personal example. I was born in Japan, can't you tell? I was born in Japan. I've lived in several states and even abroad as an adult. I have no idea where my health records are in total from the time I was born until now. And for most of you here, dare I say all of you, that is also the case. But wouldn't it be great if you as a patient can get access to and control all of your healthcare records uh, across states, across institutions. That would be great, wouldn't it? Well, there is a system that allows us to do just that. It's called MedRec, uh, and it is a system developed by MIT. It enables patients to, to integrate 
all of their health care records and then provide control on who can access these records, whether it's payment providers, health care service providers, or even medical researchers. Um, this has a number of advantages. It uh, lowers the cost for the records. Uh, it increases the accuracy and the timeliness of accessing the records. And it also facilitates shared decision making in situations where the issue to be addressed can be very complicated. Uh, and this, in general, can improve our overall health situation. So yes, blockchain technology, in this case MedRec, which uses smart contracts, uh, has the ability to change the culture. This is a very different way of uh, leveraging uh, medical records than what we're used to now. And it can also unite all of the stakeholders as part of the process. So a third use case is in the field of finance. Imagine, if you will, there are many people who are born or from emerging countries who live in Durham or the US or the West. Uh, and they send money home to their emerging country to family members and friends to help them make ends meet. And the funds are typically used to pay for goods and services like food and utilities and medical procedures. Uh, many remittance service providers charge very expensive fees as the intermediary as part of this process. And it also can take up to several days for the recipient who received the funds. Well, there is a blockchain-based uh, remittance service called G-Remit. Uh, and G-Remit enables someone who lives in the West to send money home at a reduced cost because of the disintermediation. And it's also very fast and can be very secure because it leverages the blockchain uh, security mechanisms. In addition, most remittance services are just transactional. You send the money to the receiver, you're done. But with G-Remit using blockchain, it can store customer profile information and therefore build relationships with the customer, both the sender and the receiver. For example, G-Remit can detect when a receiver's funds go unexpectedly low between regular transfers, whether they're monthly or weekly. So the sender can work with G-Remit and put together a smart contract that will automatically transfer funds to the receiver in the event the receiver's funds go unexpectedly low. And this is a way to build a relationship with the customer and not just be transactional. Now, G-Remit is a tech startup company based right here in the Triangle area. And I'm the founder of the company, by the way. <laughs> so here are three examples of use cases of how blockchain technology can be leveraged to change cultures and to bring people closer together. Uh, and I assert to you today that in the minds of each and every one of you here is the ability to innovate, to think about how you can use not only blockchain, but other technologies like AI, analytics, virtual reality, how you can use these technologies to change our culture, to solve problems, and to make the world a better place. You do have the capacity, dare I say at least 50% of your brain is half full with the capacity to make this happen. So I challenge each and every one of you today to think about how you can think about the problems that you face every day and how technology can be used to solve them. You may not be a technology professional, but you're probably no one. Get together with that person, sit down and brainstorm, because 
the results will be new and better technologies that can benefit not only Durham and the Triangle area, but the entire global society. Yes, you can do this. Thank you very much. Thank you.